Hey traders, Parker here with another indicator. Today I'll be introducing you to my channel system. It's basically my CW Parker 23 channel system. And for the most part, let's zoom in and let's uh, take it apart. What you're seeing is the price channel. It's an actual indicator on uh, Thinkorswim. So we push over. This is what it actually looks like. And it's called the price channel and I have it set for 12 and it's the same thing as you're seeing right here except for I've, I've added a, a couple of tweaks to it and if you're a fan of Ichimoku then you'll appreciate this cloud this cloud is basically uh, the cloud basically represents the channel as well for the most part this cloud is pushed forward um, in accordance with the period that you choose I have a 12 right now so this cloud is the channel push for 12 bars the top of the cloud is the highest um high for those for the 12 period and this right here the bottom of the top cloud is the highest low for the uh period here on this lower cloud which i'm looking at more so support it's going to be the highest uh lowest high for the 12 period bars and this is going to be lowest low for the 12 period bars uh, push forward this is the actual channel this blue line and this pink line right here are the is the actual channel for the most part when that line is breached it'll go away one of the reasons why uh, the same situation down here if this uh blue or cyan line the lower uh the lowest low if the price is making lower lows in accordance with the period the period average that you choose then it'll go away as well one of the reasons why I did that is because I couldn't stand uh, this right here. This line just dragging across price. And let me just change the colors for uh, for sake of seeing these. Uh, actually, this one needs to be pink. And this one needs to be cyan. So we can see it right there. And this, like I said, this is the lowest low for 12 bars. And you can see it right there. And the channel moves up. For me, I use it as a support and resistance system. And for the most part, that's what it is. This blue line right here represents the midpoint between these two lines. Uh, the highest uh, high of the 12 bars and the lowest low of the 12 bars. And that's where you get this 50 right here. And I use it as a support and resistance system. For the most part, what you're going to see, let me take some of this stuff off so we can see it a lot more clear. Uh, channel, channel, mid, high. Uh, those dots don't really bother me. I'll leave it like it is. For the most part, what you're seeing right here, when you get a BD, this is a breakdown. It broke down below the lowest low of this cloud, the bottom part of the cloud. And that's what triggered the targeting system. And this right here be your uh, decision line or the line that you want to look at uh, for possibly entering in or taking a short position. And it represents the average of the high, low, close divided by three. And you can see right there, it worked really well as a resistance area. And this stock, the QQQ, actually pushed down into this first target and into the second target. Uh, the way the targets are, they're in accordance with ATR. So this will be one ATR um, above this uh, decision line right here. Uh, yeah, for this decision line. And this is two, two times ATR. And this is uh, five times ATR. I gave you three targets, and this will be eight times ATR right there. And for the most part, that's what the this how the system works. Um, let me zoom back in. And with these red dots, what you're seeing is a lower low and a lower high, lower low and lower high. And that's basically what you're seeing is in a downtrend. You're getting lower lows and lower highs. This one right here doesn't have anything on it because you had a higher high, but then our lower low. And the green dots that you're seeing on these candles represents a higher high and a higher low, higher high and higher low. The um, EG is just an engulfing body. This body right here engulfs this as long as this um, open or this low 
part of the body is uh, greater than this uh, lower part of the body, and this higher part of the body is lower than and this this higher part of this body, you get an engulfing candle. If you're unfamiliar with an engulfing candle, just go to Investopedia or uh, just put, uh, Google engulfing candle. And basically saying that this is a bullish engulfing candle and you got this push up. Push up. And here's a red uh, a bearish engulfing candle right here. This body engulfed this previous body. But what you're seeing right here, this long low wick right here is showing you that there's support there or buyers actually came in. Price tried to be... Um, sellers try to push price down but buyers brought it back up you have this candle right here BU is a break up it's a break above the resistance of this um, cloud that's been pushed 21 peers into the future just like Ichimoku Ichimoku uh, be pushed into the future and this is basically what Ichimoku uh, am I pronouncing that right Ichimoku is right here so Ichimoku, basically what you're getting is the Tink Tinkinson, Kijin, uh Spun A, Spun B, and Chu uh, Chaiku. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. But for the most part, the blue line represents the Tinkinson period, and we can actually go into the actual uh, code for this. So with Ichimoku, it pushes everything into the future, but it takes the average of the highest high and the lowest low of this nine period, of this nine periods, right, of nine periods, and then divides by two. And that's what you get to Tinkinson and the Kijinson. Basically what it does, it takes the highest high and the lowest low of 26 periods divided by two. And that's where you get your red line from. And it's really just midpoints. Uh, for the most part, of the of you know of the average of the, of the average high and low, and then when you come to the span, you take that same Keyson period that you put uh, that you are looking for on um, nine periods, and you push that out or into the future twenty six periods, and you do the same thing with the uh, Keyson, and you push that uh, in additional twenty six periods, and then you divide that by two, and that's where you get the top of this cloud. And then you take the the span B is the highest Kijun period times two, so basically this right here is multiplied by two, or that high is multiplied by two for twenty six periods, and plus the same situation with the Kijun period that low is multiplied by two, then it's divided by two. And it, it's complicated, and for me, it's a system that a lot of people swear by works. Uh, not me. I I was big on it when it came to the bullish bears when they were really pushing. I was just learning how to trade, but this whole cloud system or this system just confused me, and I really didn't know how to time my entries and exits. You like right now, you're supposed to if the stock gets above the cloud, you post this is a good buying area. And it's supposed to act as support. And same situation down here. If the cloud, I mean, if the stock is below the cloud, then it, it'd be uh, you're gonna wait for it to go above it, or when it crosses below the cloud itself, that's when you take a short position. It works just fine for the people who believe in it and work work uh, who use who use it regularly. But it didn't work for me. And when the cloud thins out like this, that's when they say you really. Uh, Look for a break above or break below because support or resistance is really thin in those areas. But that's basically what Ichimoku is. But for the most part, all I did was take uh, the channel, push it forward 12 periods, and create my support and resistance system. For the most part, as you can see right here, once it broke above, the stock really ran. And then it used the top of the cloud. Um, yeah, this hot, the top of the cloud is support. It broke above, and you can see how when it's in this cloud right here, and remember this cloud represents the highest high of the twenty-one uh, of the twelve period move average, and the low and the highest low of the twelve move average, and it's been pushed for twelve bars. And this uh, IB right here, just inside bar, basically this high and this low. Is lower uh, is basically within the previous high and low, 
So you get this inside bars. And then you got another break right here. And here's your breakup line or your decisions to get in this stock. But you can look at it like this. It didn't even come back down to that stock. I mean, to that line. But for the most part, if you got in, you would have been profitable. You would have made it up to the uh, target one and even uh, close to target two before it went back into the cloud. Once it broke back above, you get this breakup, this uh, cyan bubble right here, and it broke back above it. You can tar uh, if you don't want the targeting system on, you can completely cut it off. Let me get rid of my lines. I forgot that they were on there. But you can completely get rid of those uh, the, the complete target system. And we can go look at this day as well. How once the, you can see right here, it just started, it just uses, the if it's in, in between these two clouds, it just, prices ranges between these things. And what else do I want to show you? But for the most part, I use the uh, actual channel as well as support and resistance as well, especially when these things go flat like this. You can see that uh, the stock is not making any new lows, but it's actually pushing above. You can see the stock making new highs according to the uh, channel as well. And for the most part, it's not invasive where it's just cluttered up the screen you can see price you can see the dots that are on the clouds you can make those uh you can see the uh green dots you can see the red dots as well and it's not invasive where you can't really see anything or it doesn't cover up price to the point where you can't see what's going on wonder another reason why i created this because my darvis box or the darvis box so we'll look at the actual Darvis box and then I'll bring mine on as well. Because you want to know if a, if a, if a stock was ranging. <clears throat> and you can see right now with the Darvis box that uh, it found this right here. And then it found, created this right here. And it said the stock was ranging between these two areas right here. And it finally broke above. And we can go, let's go back and look at today. So we can look at the same Darvis box as well. So with the Darvis box, it found this low and it found this high. And then you got this breach above. But it was said this was ranging between those two. So we can get rid of their Darvis box and we can put mine back on, my Darvis box. And let me just cut off that anchor VWAP that I put in there. I'll leave it alone. But for the most part, <clears throat> you can see my Darvis box, it works the same as a regular Darvis box, except for when you get a break above, you can actually get in on here. Like, you got your broke above, it came back uh, a retest of that, uh, uh, of that resistance right here. And then you can you could have got in right here and pushed above as well. And it has a targeting system as well. And that's one of the things that you're seeing as well here. So let me shut. I'll leave it alone. But for the most part, um, I created this because I want to know if a stock was ranging. And especially if it's inside these clouds, I would expect the, uh, the stock to be just ranging between those two. Because it's not making any new highs. And it's not making any new lows either. And you can see my Darvis box is, is, is very effective as well. And you can see right here. So you could use this in conjunction with the Darvis box because if you look right here, it found this right, this low right here of the Darvis box. This yellow line is the mid of the Darvis box, and this is the high of the Darvis box. And you can see how price just range in between there, especially once it got back into the cloud. So let me get rid of the Darvis box and let's put this back on. So one of the other features of this indicator, let's go to the higher time period. And let's go to three years. <clears throat> I think I explained all those different bubbles, but for the most part, QQQ is below the uh below the future of I mean below the this channel that's been pushed for 12 bars. And you can see it got back, uh, it's in the actual channel. The actual channel is right here. So it made this low right here. And this is the low of those 12 bars. It pushed above, but it couldn't go anywhere. It got above the 50 of the channel, but 
still couldn't go anywhere and then just create this low lows and you can actually look at these lines that are when it's not making lows is basis and it made this base this base and qqq is trying to push back above it as well so let me put my drawings back on there and let's go to the s p 500 and give think a swim a second Let me get rid of these drawings. And it's the same situation here with the uh, S&P 500. You can see how the channel actually based out. It pushed above, couldn't get back in there. And it finally breached in, to the, uh, in between the two clouds. And it ranged for a little bit. But once it finally got this break above right here, this one, and then you had another because uh, the high average or the high low close how low and close actually came back in the cloud but you got this breakup right here and the stock really just pushed forward and then you had your actual uh channel right here and you see the high is basing out while the stock is decreasing and for me i'm looking for the s p 500 to possibly come back up to either the bottom of this cloud or the uh or somewhere in between here and there. I'm not looking for the S&P 500 to go above this high right here, 389.28. And this is basically the system. Uh, let's go to the pandemic era. And we can see right here, it worked really well with the pandemic once it breached down below. The other feature I forgot to show you was this. If you only wanted to show it today or on a daily time frame, then just select uh, today. But if you want to show all of them, and you can see how this fully works for the uh, on the S&P 500. You got your stop right there if you want to take the stop short and after it breach, breaches that lower cloud. And you see the target system work very effectively. And same situation here, you got your break above. The other feature of this, you can go and scan with this as well. And I already have the channel system uh, loaded into it. And what we're looking for is a break above. The break up is true within one bar. So I do a scan. The stock has to have at least 3 million volume, be up point. 5%, 50%, and the mark is in between a dollar, so I don't have a higher value, so infinity. So, we're looking at tops, uh, it's garbage stock, I don't care what anybody says, all they do is reverse split when they stock get too low, to puts up the price, but uh, you got a lot of these energy plays, I, I didn't think tops was a... I might be thinking about it. no tops is garbage stock, but for the most part, I think I'm, I'm thinking about ships as well because those who used to trade together. But a lot of these uh, ones that popped up are these energy plays. So we can go look at uh, I think BTU was Ben Zinger was talking about this one. Let me put those lines back on as well. So BTU is a coal Peabody coal. I think it's a coal miner stock, but you can see. Once you add those target levels or all of those target levels, it can be congested and doesn't look as clean. And even if you're concerned about those bubbles that I have uh, uh, out there, you can go to uh, show bubbles or hide the bubbles. And I just hit the bubbles. So right now, that's what you're seeing right now. It's this channel indicator. And you have this breach above. And you're looking for the stock to possibly come back into this area, this high right here. Because this is probably going to still work as resistance. That high right there. Just like this low right here. If you look right there, it acted as support. And we can go, we can go look at tops real quick. I'm pretty sure it's just a reverse split or some type of split. And there's your split indicator right there from think it's one. Uh, three day, five minute. Oh man, tops really ran today. It ran from basically five something dollars up to eleven dollars, and this is the channel system. I took the bubbles off, so it looks a lot more cleaner. You see, the targeting system came back as well. 
for the most part, you got your breach, right? You can see this long, low wick right here showing the buyers push the stop back up. And once it came back in here, you can see how this cloud worked as resistance, but you got your breach above. And if you got in the stock on this decision line right here, you would have made money, especially once the stock got back above this 50 line for the channel. So we can uh, go look at it like this. And this is all you get with Thinkorswim's channel right here. And like I said, I couldn't stand this line staying there. So I am going to get rid of Ichimoku so we can look at these things side by side. Here's your breach right here. Same situation there. And you got your breach and then you see the stock just pushing above. And here's your um, second opportunity to enter in on this breach right here and it actually ran up to the second target and we can scan for whatever you want to scan for actually so I really made this so you can go scan for it in golfing bull and golfing bear breakdown line uh, no way you don't want to scan for the breakdown line that's just the line that you see I call it decision line but all is a breakdown line you got your target lines and everything but for the most part, what you would be scanning for is the inside body, breakup, breakdown, and golfing bull, and golfing bear. So we can actually scan for any stock that's, uh, for this inside, made an inside day. Or an inside bar. But it's up 0.50, has 3 million volume, and it's mark just has to be above 100. So we can go to PBR or UEC. I prefer UEC. And I have it on the daily. Well, I have to scan it on the daily. And it didn't look like it got a whole lot of volume. But for the most part, it was basically in an uptrend because of the energy, because of the OPEC. Uh, let's see. Here's your inside bar, and it's an engulfing bar as well. So this body is engulfing this one, but the t this high and this low are within this uh, candle high and low. So if I put the bubbles back on or cut those bubbles back on, we should see that, hey, it's an inside bar and it's an engulfing bar. So this would be something that's bullish because for the most part, it's an energy play. And I think this is uranium. And I wonder how they did on their earnings. They probably had good earnings or what is this? So, yeah. Uh, so we can go scan for one of those other ones as well. So that was the inside body uh, scan. We can look for in golfing bull, and we can scan for that real quick. And we're just looking for a bullish and golfing candle. So it didn't bring anything back, which is strange. Let's try and bought and golfing bear. Here we go. Oh, and Nike NKE. I see what I did. I had made a mistake in the code. So actually, let's go back to that.
Okay, so yeah, it's fixed now. So we can actually, so engulfing bull. I had it reversed. So I apologize. I had the scan reversed. So, but it gave me an opportunity to correct the but that's still kind of sort of embarrassing because I thought I had fixed all the code. But everything should be fixed. So I don't have any bears engulfing candles, but we did it. I uh, fixed the code and it showed me the bullish engulfing now. And let's go back to this right here. So here's a bearish engulfing EG and break above, but it didn't sustain that one. Bullish engulfing, you got your push above. But for the most part, this is the end of the video. One of the ways that I really like to use this, dang, Nike just collapsed after hours. Well, you brought back up, but anyway. One of the ways I like to use this indicator is let me get rid of the bubbles or the target uh, target bubbles. Uh, so no target bubbles, no target lines. It's actually pairing it with my uh, with my support and resistance indicator. Which one did I name that thing? I have a set for 12 as well. I've I done this. Uh, I showed these two together. So if you haven't watched that video, one of the reasons why you have this big blob and the S&P 500 probably isn't the best one to show it on because it did this huge wick up. So we'll go to the uh, ES and it looks like uh, everything's dropping after hours. Well, for the most part, you can use these together. And if you look at these um, support and resistance areas, you can see they line up perfectly with this channel. And to be honest with you, that's what these support and resistance levels are based off of. They're based off of the channel actually basing out or going flat. So this is these two indicators working together. Um, this is how I like to use them because the channel actually works as a dynamic uh, support and resistance because it's looking for the highest low, uh, highest high and the highest low and it creates a support and resistance system this dynamic and fluent in nature if you look at that because as the stock makes higher highs it follows this i mean as the stock makes higher lows the actual channel follows it until it bases out and you can see right here it didn't make a lower low it actually kept going up so you will look for a, a breach below the actual low and then the low that's uh then being projected forward and this like i said the high of this cyan cloud or the blue cloud is the lowest high of 12 bars you can see how these work as support resistance and you can see right now the price basically uh, petered off within this and consolidate, consolidated and it's trying to break back above out of the cloud but it's going to be in between the uh, these two clouds and you're really looking for a breach above because you didn't get a, a breakdown either but for the most part uh, let's look at this on a higher time frame And let me get rid of the drawings for a moment. And you can see the uh, ES or SSP 500 futures is actually holding these lows from way over here. So you can say, uh, I don't know what that is, the 121. So it's holding these lows right now. And like I said, I don't expect this. I don't expect the SP 500 to go back way above, but I'm looking for the uh, E minutes to possibly come back to this high to see this high or possibly one of these other highs before that high. So, somewhere around here, I'm looking for this to turn around and I'll go back and go short. 
I don't short stock, so I will go just go buy SQQ. And you look right here, SQQ pulled back today. And it's basically the pro shares, ultra short, QQQ, the technology sector. And because the S&P 500 is basically full of, uh, there's those lines. I think it's when I'm just running a little slow. But for the most part, the S&P 500 is full of technology stocks. But this is how I go short the market. I just buy SQQ and ride it up. I made a couple hundred dollars already uh, on this move right here. I think I was in around here, the 30s, 30 area. And I just rolled it up and I sold early. I sold too early. I think I showed up, sold somewhere around here. I was, um, I don't know, these, this red bar and this yellow bar kind of freaked me out. So I went and just sold. But I'll probably go long again, probably once it comes back down to this area of 46. And look for a long position or stay long. I got rid of my lines, didn't I? Yep. I meant to put those lines back before I got out of, before I went to the next stop. But you can ride this right here. All these are leverage ETFs. You can use this uh, with the amount of volatility that uh, is going on in the market. You can use these if you want to go long, uh, the uh, QQQ. And this is, uh, what is this, $22 or $22.59 now after hours. But for the most part, QQQ itself is $281. So you get, uh, depending on what your account size is, you get more a bigger bang for your buck uh, just using it and leverage ETLs. But you're not going to hold those for too long because they go through a whole rebalancing as well. Just like the Qs go through a rebalancing, the SP 500 goes through a rebalancing, and the uh, IWM goes through a rebalancing. But this is the end of the video. I wish you all well. God bless. I hope that what I said, I uh, hope something I said has helped you and uh, added value to your life or through to your trading at the very least. And I want to say thank you for supporting me and supporting my channel. God bless, and y'all have a great day. Be safe out there in the market.